Tegan, welcome to Real Vision. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. You know, we were talking a little bit off camera about your background. Uh, you didn't start out in tech. You started out in, in finance. Tell us a little bit about what you did early in your career. Yeah, absolutely. So early on in my career, I actually started uh, interning at different places within the financial ecosystem. And so I started my freshman year, I was an intern at Merrill Lynch in wealth management. Uh, and then I also did equity research for a winter investment banking at a boutique bank for, for a summer. Um, and then I uh, worked at um, Bank of America and investment banking um, and the financial institutions group. So really focusing on that part of banking. So um, the financial institutions groups a little bit more nerdy than other areas in banking. So we do our own modeling in-house. We don't outsource it, uh, outsource the MA to the MA team. Um, just because in the financial institutions group, it's a different, you have you need to understand two different types of modeling. Um, and so really enjoyed working within banking and that side, really diving in, working 100 hour weeks. Hmm. Um, but I wanted to kind of see investment banking from the other side as well. So I moved over to sales and trading at Barclays. I was on the fixed income desk. Uh, so I actually was promoted and moved from New York to San Francisco. And so I was waking up at like 3 a.m. in San Francisco. But then the very cool part about that was I would get off at about 2.30, 3 o'clock. So I'd have my entire uh, afternoons free. And so I learned about Ethereum uh, huh. about five years ago now. And so I spent the majority of my afternoons and evenings learning about the blockchain space, really getting ramped up, kind of trading my own book. I was kind of that crazy crypto girl on the sales and trading floor telling everyone to, to be excited about this new technology. Um, and, and then eventually kind of moved over to uh, the, the blockchain space. Yeah. So this is a fascinating journey. You go from New York to San Francisco, from finance, you get the, one of the roles uh, that's so coveted by people uh, who are young in these big banks uh, to be in investment banking, to be in sales and trading. And then you make this transition from, you know, from the East Coast to the West Coast, from finance to tech. Tell us a little bit about that journey and what was so compelling to you uh, about Ethereum, especially that made you think that I'm going to leave behind this career that would be a guarantee of an extremely lucrative income for the next like 40 years of your life. Yeah, absolutely. So in New York, you know, I arrived to New York from Ohio. I was really interested in kind of math and and business, and so you know, got accepted a full scholarship to Baruch in New York City, which is a finance school. I'm like, well, what is you know the best career in finance? Okay, investment banking at a, at a bulge bracket bank. Okay, I'm going to go for that, and really enjoyed the work um, within banking. And then when I kind of got that promotion out to San Francisco, you know, New York is really a hub for finance. But San Francisco is really a hub for tech. And so that was when I kind of learned about different routes that I could take within the, the tech industry. Um, but it's funny because I actually learned about Bitcoin in right when I got to college. I learned about Bitcoin from Kevin Segniki, who launched Avalanche Protocol with Emin. Um, and, you know, I was really fascinated by it. Um, but I, you know, kind of decided to go a more traditional route to get that experience under my belt. And then it was when I learned about Ethereum when I first moved to San Francisco that I really saw the opportunity for this to kind of explode into every use case, every asset class. You know, fine, Bitcoin is really revolutionizing finance, but I think Ethereum is really revolutionizing the internet. And I think Ethereum is able to do that well through the graph. Um, and so, yeah, that's really what excited me. Uh, and, you know, I was always kind of looking for my passion. I want to make the world a better place. And so I saw... The, the easiest route to do that within the crypto space. And I, I've always said this will be the largest, um, the largest wealth transfer that we see in our lifetimes. Uh, and I, I kind of am seeing that happen in real time. And a lot of really great individuals are prospering within this space that are actually making the world better. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, it's a fascinating story because it's really a microcosm of what's happening now across the country uh, for the you know for the smartest and most ambitious people. You know, when I was in my twenties and working at Credit Suisse and getting just absolutely pounded with work and miserable all the time, uh, I don't think I knew anyone. In fact, I didn't know anyone who left banking uh, to go to tech. But increasingly, that seems to be the case that there's so much competition. Uh, for those roles that they're pulling people out of sort of these elite finance roles where people would never historically have left. So I think it's absolutely a fascinating story and something that's very much in the cultural zeitgeist right now. Yeah. 
I agree. And I would say crypto is kind of the intersection where tech does meet finance or it can be. And so I think it's really interesting to a lot of people on Wall Street and also people within the tech space, you know, being in centralized finance or kind of the centralized internet, there's kind of this overlap within the crypto space. And, you know, the internet wasn't created to monetize people's data or sell people's ads, but that's kind of what it's incentivized to do. And so that's what right. it's become. And so there's a lot of brilliant minds working in finance, but also working in traditional tech that are focused on like selling people advertisements or monetizing data, because that's really, you know, where the two brilliant minds kind of came into. And now yeah. the crypto space, this infrastructure being built is, is allowing for a new opportunity for everyone. Yeah, right. I think that's extremely well said on, on the first count uh, with that transition and how it's happening. And second, uh, the challenge that we've seen in centralized uh, centralized protocols called companies, I guess, uh, Facebook, Google, who uh, Apple, who have this massive amount of data and some of the things that are happening now and the opportunities uh, that some of the technology, especially Ethereum, provides. So, so tell me, Tegan, once you uh, made this transition mentally uh, in your head that you knew that this was something that you wanted to do, what did you do next? What were your next steps in terms of, uh, in terms of the career path from there? Yeah, so it was really important to me to kind of dive in to understand the different places that I could go. So different uh, blockchains, different um, spaces within those blockchains, applications on top of those blockchains. Um, and so I joined Orchid, which is a distributed VPN backed by Andreessen Horowitz, Sequoia, Polychain. It was important to me to kind of have go to a company that had this kind of backing, especially coming from traditional finance. Um, it was felt a little bit more safe to go somewhere where kind of a lot of top funds had kind of given a check mark to. Um, and so joined Orchid, at focusing mostly on business development. Um, and then I and, and also took on investor relations. So getting those investors kind of updated uh, on a monthly basis with newsletters and then quarterly basis with calls, which uh, hadn't been done previously at Orchid. Uh, so it was great to kind of give them updates there. And then I helped launch Orchid um, in, I helped launch Orchid about two years ago now, actually. Um, and so we launched on Coinbase. It was the first time Coinbase launched in conjunction with uh, a, a token in conjunction with the network launch, which was really exciting. Um, and then after launching Orchid, I kind of took a step back and felt like a lot of the applications that were launching on Ethereum just were not competitive with centralized applications. And I believe that blockchains are the future of the internet. And so I want to make sure we kind of get to that future. Right. And so I had 32 offers after leaving Orchid and was kind of consulting. And one of the companies I was consulting with was the Graph. And I have a very committal personality. Um, I'm kind of like all or nothing. So of course, like I was kind of gravitating towards the graph, helping them really fundraise. Um, and then we were fundraising right when COVID hit. It was the bottom of the bear market, uh, but still closed a very successful oversubscribed round. Um, and when I joined the graph, it was very much like they had built this really vibrant community of developers but they hadn't translated a lot of what they were doing beyond that developer community. And so that was kind of one of the first things I came in to help with was really how do we translate this very technical product to the broader ecosystem. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.